Now, you may think, well, what if both of us are nervous? Now, one of you is a little skeptical, or antennas are up, or something. And, uh, and, and that could be a character thing, and it could always flip. It can flip. You don't end up having to be the alpha, but it can kick off that way. Um, but when I start leading the call, like I did, I'm the alpha. And that's okay, because in this relationship, she's hiring a what? Huh? A trainer. That's supposed to be a what? A leader in the industry. And I'm, and I'm supposed to follow your lead. And the moment I already feel like that's how this relationship is, I go along with it. You ever hear of the friend zone? Not in business, in like dating. <laughs> Raise your hand, girls may not as much as guys. Raise your hands if you feel like you've ever been in the friend zone. Liars. Raise your hands high. No one's gonna judge you. We've been in the friend zone. You've never been in the friend zone? Uh, maybe in elementary school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Stud. Okay. <laughs> so, so the friend zone happens quickly. And ladies, once the man is in that friend zone, it's hard for him to be out of the friend zone. He can get there, but would you admit it's a lot of work? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And that happens pretty quickly. He doesn't earn his way into the friend zone over time. Usually that happens with like first impressions. And you've probably dated guys that may have been less nice, less valuable as far as like who would be great in a relationship, less attractive maybe even, than some guys that have fallen into your friend zone because they made a better first impression right off the bat, right? They intrigued you right off the bat. And so it's very important that you set the relationship right away of not being the non-alpha. You don't want to be the alpha. I got to be the alpha. You're hiring me because I can teach you things. You want to follow my lead. You need someone to hold you accountable. That's why you're here because you can get, you have machines and dumbbells and all that stuff at big box gyms, but you need someone to walk, you, take your hand and walk you through this to your results, right? And the moment you feel like that relationship isn't there, it's going to take a lot of work on my end for you to feel like that's going to happen here. A lot of the sales are made quickly very, very quickly, and they're subtle. We think they're big things. If we're looking for the one-liner, the one thing that'll get you there, it's not gonna happen. It's actually these subtle little things, these questions, these fist bumps, these little things that you saw me do that actually get her there. And that little thing like answering the phone and asking her what her name is, and when she answers, asking her how her day is, and when she answers, asking her how she, is she a member, when she answers, asking her how she heard about, and going all the way through, that's me leading the call, and she's following whose lead? My lead, right? And so now when I say, can you be here at five o'clock? You're gonna say yes. Now, holding somebody accountable and challenging them to be there and show up and show up on time is gonna rub them the wrong way if they felt like the alpha the whole way. Again, this is all subconscious, you understand that, right? They're not thinking I'm the alpha. They're not thinking they're not gonna be a good leader. They have no idea. Just like when you first meet a guy, you're not like, oh, he's gonna be a good friend forever. You're like, just not thinking anything. You're just, your, your mind and body are just doing things that are basically saying friend zone. Okay, so with, uh, with, with this question and you're leading them down, now I can challenge you at the end because I'm the alpha. So when I say, you say 5.30, right? Go ahead and say 5.30. 5.30. Okay, awesome. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna be there at 5.30. Joe, you gonna be there? I'll be there at 5.31. Mm, you know what? Here's the deal. I'll be there at 5.31 if you're there at 5.31. I, just, I need 100% you're gonna be there. I'll be there at 5.31. Because I'm gonna make sure I meet with nobody else but you at 5.31. Perfect. Deal? Deal. See you there. All right, see you there. That would rub her the wrong way if I wasn't the alpha. If I let her leave the call, she'd be like, dude, come on, enough, I'll be there. Stop hard selling me, I'll be there. But when you led the call, you, can t you guys have clients, right? Do you talk to your clients like that sometimes? Can you, can I, do you have relationships with people where you can go, dude, you can eat good this weekend? Seriously, I'm gonna ask you on Monday if you ate good, did you eat? you're gonna tell me the truth, right? Do you guys have relationships like that with people? The reason you can have those relationships with them is because that's the relationship. But you can also develop that right from the beginning and you do that the way I taught you with answering the phone call, okay? Now, sometimes they'll start asking you questions. Now, when they do start asking you questions, you answer them, but you answer them in the form of a question. So now, excluding price, because we're gonna get down to price, because do you guys see how pricing will come later on if you're doing what I'm telling you to do? 
Yes? Okay. So give me another question that people typically want to know about the gym or about how things work or if this is good for them or anything like that. A lot of people just ask, um, so, so can you tell me, so, so what's this place all about? What's this, so what do you know about it so far? I just have a friend that comes here and she saw some results in 10 weeks, but that's all that I really know. I know okay. she works out a lot and that's about it. Okay, you got it. So basically what we like to do is get people in really great shape in a fun way and we use martial arts as a way to get so we get there so far did that make sense i'm like saying that as i go that makes sense okay all right great um is that kind of what you were asking for um yeah i want to know a little bit more as to how you get results so what do, what what do you do on a daily basis that, that makes that happen got it so we actually do focus on nutrition we also focus on the strength training and make sure that you're actually burning calories at a very high rate in a way also that allows you to burn fat even after you leave because we're increasing the metabolism too. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. It, well, before I go on, is that kind of the question you were asking? Um, yeah, that and then, so, so it sounds like you work out a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I, how many days a week are you working out then? I don't know really the answer to that question. What's the answer to the question? Six days, six days, six days. Six days a week? <laughs> okay, we generally work about six days a week. Is that like a lot for you or does that sound like something you're ready to commit to? That's a lot, but you know, I have, a, I have this bum knee. I used to run a lot and now, now, now it hurts and I don't know if I can commit to six days. Mm. Um, is it you don't think you commit to six days because you think the knee is going to be a problem or you don't think you can commit to six days because you're afraid that you don't know what to do and you might hurt the knee? I think that the knee is going to be a problem. Um, if, if I were to tell you that we work with people that have knee problems and some of them are pretty severe and we actually will modify the programming so that not only can we avoid hurting it but also strengthen it so you don't hurt it doing something silly like going down a stair, would you be open to considering doing a program like that? Or are you still like, no, dude, I don't believe you. Yeah, no, that, that, that would be good. I don't really know how to strengthen it. So. Okay, you see what I did there? Mm -hmm. And what I did was I put her in a box. So when you're asking a question, you want to ask it in, in multiple choice. And the other option is the decoy. The other option sucks. For example, gotta stand up. Oh, you know, Rhea, let's get Rhea up. So Rhea, are you gonna implement the stuff that we talked about today or is everything I just said like the worst information in the world? No, definitely. Implement. Okay, what? Yeah. <laughs> Sam, do I do that all day? <laughs> so it's not the worst information in the world, right? So we just finished working out, right? Just finished your workout, just took it to a workout. All right, awesome job, Rhea. So was that a good workout or was that just like the biggest waste of time? It was a good workout. Why? Okay, that's it. I know that sounds so simple and stupid, but it does what you need it to do. Because if you say, how was the workout? It's very different. I know it seems the same, but it's very different. Yeah. Do you feel how it's different? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so think about, ready? ready? Hey, how was the workout? Look, she, didn't even, she it takes longer to answer. Yeah. It's the same question, and she knew what question was coming. Look to the right. And she, she's making this shit up. She's pulling this out of her ass right now. She, doesn't even, she, she knew what question was coming. She already rehearsed it, and she knows what the workouts are really like, and she couldn't answer it in a reasonable amount of time. Now, that hesitation subconsciously to her gets her to wonder if she even liked it at all. But if I make it an obvious multiple choice, so what'd you think of the workout? Was that good or was that just like the biggest waste of time? It was great. Boom, quick. Can't not answer that because she knows it's not this. It's a no brainer. And so she doesn't need to think about it. Does that make sense to everybody? So far, is this stuff valuable or is it the biggest waste of time? <laughs> All right, my, my employees are doing to me. I had, uh, Chloe had done this where she goes, I, I told her I want a big whiteboard, the w size of the walls, like twice the size of this. I go, Chloe, I want a really huge whiteboard. I want this thing in there. Can you please bring it in? Because we create funnels that are like that long. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And then she calls me and she knows me. She knows how much I want things the way I want things, you know? And she goes, hey, Mike, the people said they can't get a big whiteboard like that all the way up the stairs, but they said they can get two whiteboards up and put them side by side. Is that good or is that just like the worst idea? <laughs> and I go, Chloe, you got it.
You're doing it. It's not the worst idea. Let's get those bad boys up there. Um, <laughs> so you're good. You can sit down now. So that we're going to get somebody else up here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Where's Zoe? Let's get Zoe up here. Mm-hmm. Zoe. 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 Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to do that again. Ready? Zo, 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 zo. All right. You're new to this thing, right? Kind of, sort of. Not really. Yeah. What's kind of, sort of? To ownership and all that fun stuff. But... Okay, that's yeah. what I mean. So, yeah. so, new to this stuff. Behind okay. The curtain. I'm going to yeah. give you, I don't need two, right? No. Surround sound like RC. <laughs> Nothing for Zo. Okay. So, um, you ha have you been in a sales pitch yet? I have. You have. Okay, so how did that go? Amazing. Real Tell me about how it went. Um, I mean, typically, the reason, by the way, the reason I brought you up here is because, from what I understand, you actually have a really good sales background. Decent, yeah. Okay, so yeah, tell I'm, me how it went. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna again under deliver, you know, under or under promise, over deliver with my stuff. Now, hold on. No. Everyone's contrary by nature. What if I had said, now I heard you really don't have a good background in sales at all. What would you have said? You're a liar. <laughs> Isn't it great? You see this shit happening? Like, it's just so crazy, but it's true. I complimented him, and instead of accepting it, he had to literally just, you couldn't help yourself. You had to, like, decent. Right. You know you're good, dude. Okay. People are saying it. Okay, so go ahead. So tell me how it went. So t I'm, I'm, I was trained in sales by, like, Best Buy and stuff like that. So um, I basically kind of very similar to how you're doing with lots of questions. What, you know, what are you looking for? Where have you worked out before? What did you like? What did you do not like? I have all, I kind of attribute it to giving myself bullets and ammunition to, I'm already overcoming your objections and learning all about you, your likes, your dislikes, before I'm even starting my pitch and, and it's a conversation method. Um, and I mean, honestly, like our conversion rate at our gym, once we get them in the door is pretty significant. So, you know, stop right there. Yeah. Okay. Now you were done with that sentence, weren't you? Yeah. Why do you think he kept going? Huh? I gave him the space. What do people do when they did, when they have space? Fill up. You were done with that sentence, Correct. but you kept going because you felt I wasn't done. Right. So here's another thing. He's great at sales and even somebody that's great at sales can always Fall, you knew that already. There's just no way you didn't know silence is golden in sales. Somebody's experience is you. You knew that. Just like you all know that a pizza's bad, yet, and I know pizza's bad, but what did I have at 12.30 at night last night, Sam? Pizza. <laughs> what a sloppy mess. I was so hungry, and it was, it was, I just, my flight just landed, and I had to get something, and the only thing that delivers to this hotel that late at night is a pizzeria right around here, and I had a bunch of pizza. The point is, though, we all know things, and we will either forget them or we will, I, I have been leading this conversation. Because I'm leading the conversation, you're not in control. Be and and it, not to say that you have no control, but I want you to understand in this relationship, me up here, you up here, because of this, I am able to just with a matter of doing this, like I was doing, let you keep going, keep going. Keep, I, I could have let you, you could have gone for another five, 10 minutes. You know that, right? Literally, yes, I could have. Yeah. And, <laughs> When you guys are selling, too many people interrupt. You need to shut your mouth. Because a lot of times, they'll sell themselves into it, number one. But number two, um, finishing someone's sentence is cute in a relationship, but it's deal-breaking in business. Sometimes you're wrong. And when you're right, you're doing it wrong because it's supposed to be their idea, not yours. You're literally stealing your own sale. So, where are you from? Rochester, Minnesota. Minnesota, really cool. Uh, actually, you know what, one of my favorite players of all time is, is uh, Kevin Garnett. Did you watch him play? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a be I should have just never said that. Now, some people will find something to tie into that, right? Because why? Because why? Some people don't like him. Well, no, no, why, do, why, why, do, why, why did I say that? Build rapport. Build rapport, right? How many kids you got? Two. Oh, I got four kids, really. Shut up, Mike. No one cares about your kids. Not, is he here? To, how much interest did you have in my kids sitting down here to get results in fitness? 
No. Zero. No. <laughs> you, you, did you even know you were going to talk about Kevin Garnett today? No, Are you going to go home happy you did? Yes. Really? It's a big ticket. <laughs> He is actually, you know what, for you guys, that was like your only guy ever. So. <laughs> so Kevin Love was like a potential possible. All right, so what I, what I want to get across here, guys, is you want to let them talk as much as you possibly can, and you never, ever, 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 ever want to talk about yourself. Say that. Never talk about, I know why you do it. You feel like it builds rapport. It ruins it. Ruins it. I want to get, uh, stay here, Zoe, because we're going to use you in a minute, but I want to, who, who's got kids? Raise your hand. Moms, moms, moms only, moms only. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You too. Come on up. No, no, you're good. Come on up. <laughs> okay, I want you all up here. I'll move the chair. So let's back up a bit. Give them some space. We can't get too close. You and I are in the friend zone, right? <laughs> okay, go over there. <laughs> all right, you're all talking. Go ahead and get in like a circle like you're talking, kind of, okay? You're all just getting together. It's the first time you haven't seen each other in maybe a few days, and you're catching up on things. You've been girlfriends for a while. You know you all have kids. Um, what's your name? Kathleen. Tell them a funny story about what your kid just did. Recently. Oh. I like how you're looking to the left, though. <laughs> Honesty. Can anybody jump in and help with the story yeah, about yeah, their kid? I can. Okay. I can. So last night we got a call from one daughter <coughs> that they were sun tanning. One's holding the other one's glasses. Oh, I just wanted to tickle her with some grass. Went into the kitchen, comes back out. Of course, the glasses go flying across the yard, and now the glasses are in two pieces. Right? <laughs> Not so funny, but frustrating. Yeah. But kids will be kids. And oh, I know. And my Johnny. You should see what he did. Last week, I couldn't believe it, guys. He, and now what, it, so was I even really listening? Was I even really interested? What do you think all of us were just doing? Waiting for her to, so we can do, so we can talk about our kids. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, that's so funny. Crazy, right? And then, and then we're all racing, like, who can be there first, right? As soon as you don't even have a second before you, and then as soon as she says it, we're all like, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and we're waiting for our turn, and we're all going to go around and around, and we're all talking about our own kids. Raise your hand if you've seen this happen before. And we will top whatever it is. Billy is so good. Oh, I know. My Joey is so good. I'm going to kill Billy. He's such a jerk. Oh, my Cindy is even worse. And we're literally arguing about whose kid is worse just to have the better story about our kid because we and our kid represents us, which is why those football dads sometimes are like a terror, like a terror to have in the stands because when they're watching their kids play football, why do they, why do those dads, not all dads, but why do those dads, when they get mad and throw folding chairs, why are they upset? They think their kid represents them. Right. They may have on field or right, exactly, exactly. Because they're not mad when the other kid messes up. Right, so that's it. I just need you guys to be, create a visual, create a visual. So when you, when you think about that, you got to remember that uh, oh, how much time do I have really quick, too? Because I want to I get to a couple things, too. Okay, great, great, great. So when you think about that, guys, you got to remember that, um, what was your name again? Kathleen. Kathleen, she deals with that all day, where she goes to say something about herself, and then somebody else starts talking about themselves <laughs> to relate. And she gets that all day. How many times do you really get follow-up questions to the kid's story? Really? And then what did he do? <laughs> Has that really ever happened?